shall we start? Okay. Hi, good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for coming to the very last session. <laughs> We are about to finish. <laughs> okay, my name is Kumiko Usada Sato from National Astronomical Observatory of Japan in Tokyo, Japan. And uh, thank you so much for give, giving me a chance to present our Japanese efforts uh, to, for, to build networks or best practices on astronomy for inclusion and uh, extension to the international communities. At first, let, uh, let, us, uh, let me introduce. Actually, unfortunately, uh, my colleague, Linda Canas, uh, is not available today, but we will talk together. And in my talk, we, I will use three acronyms. So please memorize three acronyms. I am from NAOJ, National Astronomical Observatory of Japan, so NAOJ. And so, uh, 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 so, NOJ is the Astronomical Observatory in Japan, National Observatory. And my colleague, Lina, she is originally from Portugal. And she works at IAU. IAU is International Astronomical Union. Actually, IAU is the world's largest professional body for astronomers. And it's founded in 1990, uh, 1990. So this year, 2019, is the 100th anniversary. So we are celebrating the anniversary. And IAU has an outreach office at NAOJ in Tokyo. So outreach office name is OAO, Office for Astronomy Outreach. So I'm from NLJ, and Lina is working OAO, located at NLJ. <laughs> okay. okay, good, very good. Good memory, <laughs> thank you so much. And I have good news for you. So we are IAU, International Astronomy Union, um, developed, uh, made, created the IAU strategic plan from 2020 to 2030. And IAU set five goals. The goal one is very originary, astronomical research. But goal two is the IAU promotes the inclusive advancement of the field of astronomy in every country. So IAU mentions astronomy for inclusion. This is a good deal, right? And goal three is development. Use astronomy as a tool for development. Goal four is communication. This is OAO work. So the communicating astronomy with the public. Goal five is education, K-12 education. So we astronomers uh, recognize astronomy for inclusion is important. And uh, you know, I am only one Japanese uh, participant, so I want to put many things <laughs> what we are doing in Japan. So we have five topics. The number one is challenges for astronomy for inclusion. And the number two is our domestic efforts, astronomy for inclusion in Japan. So we created domestic working groups. And number two is my work at NAOJ. And number three, from Japanese community to the international ones. So we have extension from domestic to international. Number four is IAU efforts. So this is an international one. And number five is announcement. We will hold the IAU Symposium on November 12th to 15th this year in Tokyo at NAOJ <laughs> about astronomy for equity, diversity, and inclusion. So you may have received uh, our flyer about this symposium. Please sign up. OK, let's start from the number one, challenges for astronomy for inclusion. Everybody has a right to learn or enjoy or experience the universe, but many people do not have enough opportunities. Actually, many communicators or educators struggle for three things. Number one, finding a community. Number two, lack of resources and experiences. Number three, insecurity. Insecurity means I'm, I, I'm afraid to talk to people with disability or I'm afraid to make mistakes in communication, like this, uh, this kind of thing. 
And you already know. So our, our philosophy of Ashrami for Inclusion is not a particular activity, not just for people with disabilities, but good for everybody. This is our philosophy. So uh, let me introduce uh, what we, are, we did and what we are doing in Japan. Ashrami for Inclusion in Japan. The first topic is uh, we created Universal Design Ashrami Working Group in 2006. So you have, you, you, you can see this person. He is Dr. Mineshige. He is a professor, Ashrami professor, black hole professor in Kyoto University. So he created this working group and I was invited to join in 2006. At the first time, we didn't have any experiences. So we just say, I don't know how to start. But later, we found a very good partner. Uh, so one blind amateur, uh, one blind astronomy fan joined us. So she connected us with blind community. And we developed multimodal astronomy textbooks in three levels. Multimodal book means one contents in different media. I mean, printed version, braille version, audiobook, and ebook. Ebook means you can, en uh, on the laptop, on the screen, you can enlarge letters, or you can read white letters in the black background. And we developed astronomy textbooks in three different levels. The first one is college undergraduate levels level in science course. The second one is junior high. And the third one is a picture book for young kids. And the authors of three books are uh, Dr. Mineshige and Mr. Takahashi. Mr. Takahashi is an art science teacher at a high school. I want to show you one picture in the textbook. Do you know what is this? This is Orion Nebula captured with our Subaru telescope on Mauna Kea, Hawaii. And you know, in many Ashmi textbooks, this, this is just Orion Nebula. So if you are sighted, you can see this picture. You don't understand how to see, how to understand this picture. But we consider uh, to explain to everyone, including visually impaired people. So we make a long, 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 very detailed capture, caption. So, uh, it is very good for non-professionals. So even if you are sighted, you don't know how to, see, how, to, how to see this picture, but with this detailed picture, uh, uh, I'm sorry, with detailed caption, you can understand deeply. This is our philosophy, Ashrami for Inclusion for everybody. And Dr. Mineshige, working with blind people and developed some 2D tactile model, tactile images. Do you know what is this? Jupiter, and this is Saturn. So uh, he created these tactile models with three different sizes of dots. And after uh, he tested, we recognized Saturn has a problem. You know, sighted people can see, oh, this is, these are rings, but rings are 3D, but we use we draw rings in 2D. So some blind people do not understand well. And I brought this tactile model. So tactile dots are in Japanese. You may not read this one. But please enjoy touching the images of Jupiter and Saturn. So I post it over here. This is Saturn. And yeah. And please touch and pass around. So after we finished publishing three different kinds of Ashram textbooks, we closed this working group. And now we develop a new working group about Ashram Sign Language. This, uh, this is in collaboration with the IAU working group. I and Lina are the members of IAU working group Ashromi for equity and inclusion. So in Ashromi professional field, we use many jargons, I mean technical terms. But 
in some countries, there is no words, astronomical words, in sign languages. So we worked together in more, in more than 20 countries, and we collected the first 47 astronomy words, like a sun, moon, or something. And we uh, released, in 2017, we released the first 47 words in more than 20 countries. And so you see many, many people. And you can see everybody using two hands and make a telescope tube. <laughs> so this word is astronomy in different countries. And this is the, the right one is Japanese one. So, uh, so now we are in the second phase. We are collecting the second 48 astronomy words. So in Japan, in the domestic working group, we are checking the sign language, and sometimes we create the understandable signs, and we are making this table. So in future, we will upload this table and with some uh, illustrations and some movies. Maybe in future, we will translate into English, I hope. <clears throat> The second effort is my effort uh, at NEOJ, Mitaka City. So uh, the cutting edge telescopes of NEOJ is outside of Japan. But in Tokyo, at NEOJ headquarters, we have old retired telescopes. So, uh, so we created the visitors areas, and this visitors area is open daily to the public. So everybody can visit and look at these old telescopes, historical telescopes. So this one is the biggest telescope, telescope dome enclosure. Its height is 64 feet or 19.5 meter. This is two-story building. There are many, many steps, stairs. And inside of the enclosure, we see a uh, Japanese biggest refractor. It, uh, so, its diameter is 26 inches, and the length of the tube is 33 feet. So this is the size of the adult, so nobody can touch the eyepiece. It's a very, very big telescope. <laughs> and I have a question to you. Look at this picture. Do you think is this old facility friendly to everyone? <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, I started working at NOJ Mitaka in 2013, and when I started working here, we could provide a small guidebook in Japanese printed version only. This is a problem. So I need your help. Please help me to improve this condition. So everybody has post-it. If you don't have, please have. I have some extra here. So. Let's think about this old building. It's very high building, two-story building, many, many stairs, and the telescope is very, very large. So how to make this facility friendly to visually impaired people, or hearing impaired people, or motoristy impaired people, like people in a wheelchair, or non-Japanese speaking people like you? <laughs> so pick up one target, and please, share your idea how to improve this facility. But, you know, budget is very, very limited. We have very severe budget situation. So please do not use, uh, so your budget mu must not exceed $1,500. OK? So please write your idea in the post-it. Actually, this is Japanese culture. So in Japan, we have a different culture from the US. So many American people are very talkative. The discussion is very successful. But including me, Japanese people are very shy. So uh, what we are doing is for the group discussion, we give this post-it, and everybody can write down and put in the big sheet and start group discussion. And in the, in the group, some uh, difficulties, so visually impaired, visually, impaired, visually impaired people or learning disability people are included. You can start communication. 
And uh, yes, yeah, before writing. OK, so please write and uh, share your ideas. I need your help. So, so, so there are many, many targets. So just pick up one target and uh, share your idea. retired telescope. So when we were observing, can you see the red flower over here? This red flower went up and down. But now we don't use this one. So this red flower is fixed. And everybody can come inside of the enclosure. Thank you for asking me. Okay, one more minute. Ideas. Okay. Could you could you please? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So um, some of the same things we've been seeing since that telescope is so big for that a blind person couldn't take in the whole thing. Right. On, have a pretty good sized model of it mm -hmm. that they can put their hands on and an audio guided tour on it. So get in touch with C three D and have them make the model. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much. It's a great idea. Great. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, so we at your Peace Observatory in Wisconsin, we have a similar refracting telescope where the mm -hmm. floor goes up and down, and we've been doing accessible tours for a number of years, and we do, do use 3D models. Mm -hmm. We walk across, there's a lot of things that you can do as far as sound. Um, with a deaf and hard of hearing um, the students, we hold a star party where we just hire inter interpreters. We train our own interpreters oh, so great. they understand the astronomy. We, they allow that we train interpreters in astronomy before they come so they are, can actually describe the signs better. And uh, I, we also, we want a playground. We want to, uh, because you can't get a wheelchair to the telescope, um, we would like to build one that you could wheel up to outside that's, that mm -hmm. you can push around and, and maybe slide down it. Thank you so much. Wow. Actually, yeah, tra 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 train the interpreter is very, very important. Actually, many sign language inter interpreter feels interpreting in Ashram is very difficult. So, thank you so much for sharing. So, okay. So, one, two more, two more, uh, one, two, three, three more. Okay. So, okay, could you, uh, so the purple, purple shirts? Yeah. Sorry, uh, if you had a railing around the, um, around, I mean, outside, mm -hmm. uh, that was the length of the, uh, even if it's rounded, but and put Braille on it describing the telescope. The person could read it as they mm -hmm. walked along the railing just to see the distance. It's something we did artsy yes. for another thing. So as you read the description, you're also moving the distance of the thing. So yeah, Thank you so much. That's a great idea. Nori Breeze. Okay, I'm just thinking of, of Dr. Grandin's speech. Contact local uh, students from a technical institute to design and build a small elevator so that people in wheelchairs can get into the building to see the telescope. Thank you so much. Actually, we consider this kind of situation. And I, we, we consult a company, but this is old, old, old building. 
And uh, we found that it is very difficult, very unfortunately. But thank you so much for sharing. Okay, the last one, please. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. So from now, I will. Uh, I'd like to show you how to solve. Uh, how how we solved these problems. The first one. So it is difficult to set an elevator. So we gave up. Instead, yeah, yeah. Actually, due to the many 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 conditions, instead of elevator, we install two uh, cameras on the second floor, and. From the first, uh, on the first floor, everybody can look at the telescope and they, using the bars and keyboards, they can control the, uh, the uh, camera. And the language thing, we translated Japanese one into four more languages, English, Korean, Spanish, and Chinese. And of course, we develop a uh, uh, braille and large letter Guidebook. So when we develop this one, we work with two blind people and one expert of developing a tactile map. So they gave us a good, uh, good advices for me. And this is not a building, but we have another exhibit, the solar system walk. This is a scale model of the solar system, and we put Bray close to the Earth's ball. So based on the advices from blind people. After we did these things, I recognized this is not good enough. So the next step was we made an audio guide. But you know, our budget is very, very limited. We cannot buy any hardware. So if you have cell phone or tablet, just scan this QR code, and you can go to the uh, audio guide website. So when we created, so each facility have audio guide, and when we created the explanation, we consult uh, blind people. So we improve based on the feedbacks from blind people. And now this is a very uh, recent activities. We also made the six movies of sign language explanation. So these people are the working group member, and these people are hearing impaired people or sign language interpreter. So please, if, if you are interested, please sec, scan. And from the top page, you see three boxes. The first one is Japanese audio. The second one is English audio. The third one is uh, sign language movie. The other one is, uh, yes, please. Ah, this is Japanese Sign Language. Sorry, not ASL. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the second, uh, the an another topic is, uh, this is my personal project. I developed a 3D tactile model with a 3D printer. So this project is uh, started, inspired by my blind friend. When he came to our facility, he asked me a lot of questions. These are not difficult questions. If he is sighted, but I feel really difficult without any tactile models. That's why we started uh, creating NEOJ related telescope models. The first one is a Subaru telescope located on Hawaii. This is a world, uh, one of the world's biggest optical infrared telescope. So we uh, put in, uh, break into nine, 70 pieces and using 3D printer, we created this super telescope model. When we made a prototype, I brought this one to a blind school and asked a science teacher. And the science teacher said, during science classes, students learn how to touch the samples. So this is good enough, but this model is too detailed for students. Please simplify. That's why we created the details, original version, and simplified, simplified version. For example, look at the top rings. The, the top, top rings is just ring for the simplified model. And you know, 
Many blind people care the texture. This is rough or smooth. That's why we put, uh, we use the different te texture for the primary mirror. So you can touch very smooth, smooth uh, texture for the primary mirror. And same as the uh, real server telescope. This telescope moves right and left and up and down. So you can learn how the telescope moves. And small telescope, uh, with small telescope, you can exchange cameras and instruments at the bottom part and top part. So we can exchange the part. Actually, I brought another piece, but it may be lost, so I keep in the pocket. <laughs> so please feel touching. And now we are developing the, another radio telescope. But this is optical infrared telescope. This is radio telescope, but same optics and same motion, up and down and right and left. So I will bring this one. You said one's a detail and one's a not. Is this the detail? Yes, yes. This is a uh, this is detailed model, and we open the website in English and Japanese. So if you are interested, in, please download the STL file, printable 3D printable file, and create your own Subaru telescope model. And then, uh, oh, okay, so ten more minutes, okay. And I visited uh, a blind school in Tokyo, and uh, I have good connection with Japan Braille Library. So Japan Braille Library has a tactile museum, small museum, and working with tactile museum, I am very fortunate to supervise the special exhibit of Touch the Universe in last August to last December. So these members are the, uh, from J uh, Japan Braille Library. And I, 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 so many people touched our small telescope model. And also, we used other uh, models, like moon model, Mars model. I do not create this one. I just borrow the file from the another project, A Touch of Universe in Spain. And these uh, plant balls are from IAU, Universe in the Box, uh, Universe Awareness, Universe in the Box. So we reuse existing models. So this is a summary of uh, what we did. So at the beginning, I explained many communicators, educators struggle for number one, finding a community. So in Japan, we established a working group with people with disabilities. And we made a connection with blind communities. And the next topic, topic we held symposia. And we connect more people. Number two, lack of resources and experiences. So we established textbooks, 3D models, and so on. And also, we used existing resources. Number three, insecurity. We ask, so when I have a question, every time we ask uh, blind people or deaf people. OK, please ask. OK, we have 10 more minutes, so <laughs> I have to rush up. <laughs> So the number three, so from Japan to international communities. So in Japan, we held a series, three, three symposia on universal design for astronomy education. So the first one was held in 2010, next one was 2013. So this is domestic one. So we built a national community. And all three symposia was held at NEOJ, Tokyo. And at each symposi symposium, more than 120 people, including blind people and deaf people or people in a wheelchair, attended. And after Lina came to Japan, we held a third one. So we added uh, international components. So about 12 people outside of Japan joined us, and we held many workshops. So each participant bring back some active resource, resources. I cut this one. So some examples of the workshops. This is a good example of international collaboration. My collaborator, Lina, held a workshop of making a tactile planetarium <laughs> from low cost materials. So using a cardboard, uh, they made a small dome, telescope uh, planetarium dome, and made a tactile planetarium. 
This activity is originally from him. He is Samil from India, India, and we imported these activities to Japan. Another one is uh, some workshops was, were led by people with disability. For example, this workshop, Exploring Universe, led by sign language peoples. These two ladies are deaf, so they led this workshop. And everybody put earplugs into, your, uh, into his her ears. Nobody can hear, and we uh, try to communicate without verbal words. Okay, so this is domestic to international communities. And number four, this is IU action. I already explained this one. So now we are collecting Ashromi sign language words in different countries. <laughs> and as I explained at the first, uh, from the beginning, IEU is celebrating its 100th anniversary in this year. And Inspiring Stars project is one of the global projects of IAU, and Lina is the, one of the leaders of this project. So, Inspiring Stars project showcases astronomy based practice, practices around the world at didactic, outreach, development, and research levels. And Inspiring Stars are being held in multiple countries, and this is the first one held last summer during the IAU, Simpo uh, IAU General Assembly in Vienna, Europe. So she is uh, Amelia, she's a Spanish uh, outreach practitioner, so she developed this uh, Touch of Universe project, and you see, this is my small telescope model. <laughs> and the last one, this is the announcement. So uh, we are preparing for the IAU Symposium on Astronomy for Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. It will be held in this November, during 12 to 15 November, at NEOJ, Tokyo, Japan. So actually, this is the very first IAU symposium about Astronomy for Equity, Diversity, and, diversity and Inclusion. And we have seven key topics. The first one is learning from best practices. Number two, identify and address barriers to access. Number three, new technologies for accessibility. Number four, astronomy for society. So the target of this symposium is mainly for IEU members, I mean out, uh, astronomy researchers. But of course, we discuss not only research, researches, but also communication and outreach. Number five, SDGs. Number five, IAU 100th anniversary. And number seven, diversity in research. What is the benefit of diversity in research? And one of our goals is to create Mitaka resolutions. The Mitaka, resolution, Mitaka resolutions are the tangible del deliverable of the Astronomy for Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Symposium. So this is, so we just started creating these Mitaka resolutions. And the Mitaka resolution will be a draft of IAU resolution. So after, uh, at the end of the symposium, we announce the Mitaka resolutions. And after the symposium, we will send a proposal to IAU execu executive committee to be approved as uh, IAU resolution until, gen uh, until the next IAU General Assembly in 2021. Okay, thank you so much for joining. And uh, yes, so um, two questions. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, so the 12th to the 15th <coughs> conference was that already moved to the proper dates, or from our point of view, is that the 13th through the 16th? Ah, uh, you mean IE symposium? Yeah. Yes, yeah, I so already. You already move it to account for the time difference, so it's our 12th through 15th, or is it based? Ah, uh, this is uh, Japan time. Yes, Japan time. So in East Coast, maybe 11 to 14 or something. <laughs> yes, please, Professor. Yeah, I just got to think. I remember reading one time about a research study uh, where uh, blind students were able to echolocate <laughs> in a building mm -hmm. I, I, and use all the visual cortex for auditory. I'm just wanting if you could take an 
images and telescopes mm -hmm. and run them through a program that would convert it to music. And music. The person would uh, see things in that that a sighted person wouldn't because you've got all that visual cortex real estate that's not going to sound. This is uh, a great uh, idea. Uh, and it wouldn't be that expensive. Right, uh, right. Actually, and, and yesterday, uh, no, Noreen presented use many senses. So this is exactly what she's doing. But so, and, in other words, you're doing yes. like converting DNA sequences to uh -huh. And mm. they come out like music. Right. And there's things where blind people uh, were playing a game where they were echolocating inside a building they'd never been in. And then they figured out it was a building. Well, but something where you're mm -hmm. converting star data to tonal. There is software that actually does some of this yeah. stuff. And a blind mm. person may be able to do things that a sighted one can't. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. You're a great idea. We will think about it. make a music. <laughs> yes, Kate, please. Oh, there also is, um, you can we do know that you can play, there's good research that says if you play a video game with a person who's fully blind, uh, that goes, that as you navigate around a building, you, know, mm -hmm. map, um, the thing. That you can do that and that their success in independently navigating the, the actual building when they get there is highly accurate. I so see. their ability to build a visual map of a new space from a video game, an auditory video game, mm -hmm. an auditory video game, an auditory video game. Uh-huh. I'm going to bring something about that. The next notification is being done, it's, it's at the preliminary stage and um, we did some of it at my presentation, and yeah. I do more of that as mm -hmm. part of our, our project. Mm -hmm. There's also a, an astronomer, a blind astronomer, who's do, doing research on including auditory data for sighted astronomers. Yeah. Right. To see it, whether or not mm -hmm. they pick up anything more. Yeah. Than that. A blind person's going to do more of that auditory data than. Although it also gets Thank you so much. Good, good advice. So the time runs out. So that you are the last <laughs> question. Uh, I yeah. just wanted to ask you. Yes. Can you just give us your information out loud. Okay, my information. Okay, uh, my name is Kumiko Usuda Sato. So uh, email is very simple. Ki ku Kumiko K U M I K O dot Usuda U S U D A at mark N A O dot ac.jp. So my last name is Usuda, but uh, I have no relation with USDA. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much for participating, and thank you so much for good, good advices. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And we will now have. Um, there will be closing remarks in the um, ballroom right now. So if you could proceed directly to the ballroom, we will be having closing remarks for the conference. Thank you all very much for coming, and thank you, Kumiko.